I would like to, just as I begin to minister, to thank the Lord for Sister Becky, who is a mother to us as a family and a grandma to my children. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to give honor where honor is due. Amen. I praise the Lord for her. I want to thank the Lord for Brother Vernon and his uh, wife who have given us accommodation for their hospitality and for each one of you being present here um, is tremendous and Satan does not like us to come together and and portray and depict this glorious power of God as we are united not preaching about unity but living it Amen. and Satan would do anything to hinder but he can do that much. Satan is limited. Our God is unlimited. And so tonight we're going to preach. The best pill is the gospel. <laughs> and so tonight we're going to preach from the word of God. And I'm going to remove whatever hindrance there may be. <laughs> preach as the Lord lays upon my heart. I am not going to give you anything that my mind would want me to give you. I'm going to share exclusively what the Lord lays upon my heart. If there comes a point during the message where you don't agree with me or you feel offended, uh, don't even talk to me. Talk to the Lord about it. Uh, he'll know how to sort it out with you. I may not have the right thing to say to you. But we're going to take our reading from the book of Revelation, the unfolding of things the unveiling, the opening of things. And I, when I preach, I preach like it is the final message before the return of Jesus. I preach like I may never have the opportunity to come to Joplin again because you may kick me out tonight. <laughs> and so I'm going to preach. I preach the message because God has done a work in my life. Amen. God has taken me out of darkness and placed me in his marvelous light. Once I was bound, now I am free. Once I was blind, now I can see. And for this reason, I declare this good news with zeal and with excitement Amen. and with fervor, because greater is he that is within me than he that is in the world, Amen. Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. When I speak tonight and I say something that is true, feel free to say amen or even hallelujah. I will not be offended. John writes in the book of Revelation, chapter 1, reading from verse 4. John to the seven churches which are at Joplin, which are in Gary, which are in Texas, which are in America, which are in Africa, Australia, wherever it is, God is, has a message for the church of this present hour. Amen. And folk, it is time that the church of God, which is not the building down the street, but which is the temple of God, you and I, that we begin to recognize the urgency of the hour, the urgency of the moment, and that there is death that is out there. You and I have the answer, and we had better and live like we have the answer, and we're taking the answer to the people that are dying. This is not something that is done in a corner. This is not something that is done in a bedroom scene. This was done upon Calvary's hill so the world could see there is hope that is not in the Pope that is in Jesus Christ. Amen. And so I want you to know tonight that the message and the hour that we are in is an urgent message. We are living in the final decade of this century. The year 2000 is about to appear. How much are we doing? As I prepared and as I looked at the message and as I preached the message to myself, I don't come to preach to you. I preach to myself firstly. And as I looked over the message, I realized there are so many things that we are hiding under a bushel. It's good for us folk to come together in Joplin but when we leave from Joplin, do we take the message from Joplin to the world that is dying? Amen. Amen. Or do we tank up? 
and tank up and tank up. It's good to get the feeding. It is better to give off what we have received. Amen. We've started an assembly across from the tavern called the Friendly Tavern. And we're right across from this building of demon worship. Witchcraft, if you, if you may call it that, right across from this building. Men dragging their wives by the hair. Men beating up on each other. No shame, no concern, no respect, no regard for the meetings of God that go on across the street. And so I said to the men the other day, they have no concern and they are not ashamed of what they are doing. They are proud of the thing that they have. Satan, why do we keep ours in the walls, behind the confines of the walls, and nobody knows that we are even having church? We are so silent about the good news. I wonder if it is good to some folks. We are so quiet and prim and proper about it. We don't want anybody to hear, and least of all, we don't want to offend this great country of America. <laughs> so we will not preach it out in the street. I said, we will take it out to the street. If they don't come, and folk, I don't need anyone to agree with me upon it. <laughs> I believe it, and I do it. Amen. We take our amplifiers out, we get our sound system on the street. And we preach the good news that Jesus Christ paid the price. You don't have to be a drunk. You don't have to be a dope dealer. You don't have to be a harlot. You don't have to be a prostitute. You can be whole because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. It still cleanses from all unrighteousness. Amen. The blood of Jesus has Amen. power. The subject that we speak on that makes the devil mad and keeps us glad. John says grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come from the seven spirits who are before his throne and from Jesus Christ the faithful witness the firstborn from the dead and the ruler over kings and of the earth to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Yes. Now, folk, if I were to quit right there, that message would speak yes. to your heart. Who washed us in his own blood. The question tonight is, are you washed? And we conclude with that hymn tonight, in the blood of the Lamb. I am not posing a question tonight of have you been reformed or have you been confirmed it's not confirmation or reformation or decoration it is transformation by the renewing of our mind Amen. Amen. those things that I used to do I do it no more it was a glad day when I was born again Amen. a man came in front do these things come out of this thing I, I don't like to be contained can I take this microphone out here just move. All right. I, I don't like to... I, I cannot be contained by wood. The government in South Africa tried to contain us. I cannot stay behind wood. A man came into the meeting Friday night on dope, cocaine, him and his wife. The man listened as he drove by. We were out. We were having prayer time outside. Now, folks, this is not being parasitical. We are doing it so that the world can know that as believers, we are here. And we're going nowhere for the time being. Amen. We are not scared because of gang territory. God has sent us. And the safest place to be, they said to me, be careful of the neighborhood that you are living in. No, sir. In the center of God's will is the safest place to be. Amen. Amen. They can have dope dealers and dope addicts. They can have firearms and guns. We have the blood of Jesus. Oh, the angels of the Lord encamp round about those that fear him. If you fear God tonight, you don't have to fear the bullet of a dope dealer. Amen. You don't have to fear sarcasm and criticism from anyone if you fear the Lord. Amen. Blessed is he who trusteth in the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. It is good to know that we are of a kindred spirit. And this man drives Amen. by and makes fun. 
And about 15 minutes later, he comes back and he says, Brother Rodri, I am coming to tell you that as I drove by, we made fun of you. We had a chuckle and we laughed about you and the things that you do. But he says, when I got home, I was disturbed. And he says, I don't want to do these things. He says, I believe I grew up as a young man. I knew Christ. But he says, I've turned since turned my back on. Thank God that I was not a Baptist because I would not have prayed with him. <laughs> and we prayed together with this man. And the man comes to the place where he says, I need to get right with God. Sunday morning, Saturday, I visited this man. Sunday, he was in the morning service, dressed long before I could be there. Sunday evening, he spent the day with us Sunday, never had a touch of cocaine. Went back to his home, we talked later that night. He says, sir, I have not even had the desire for a cigarette. <laughs> I hope nobody has the desire for a cigarette in this meeting tonight. <laughs> I hate cigarettes. I don't allow it in the vehicle that I drive, even if it is a rented vehicle. It does not come into my home because these places belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. Someone said to me, a deacon one day said, do you mind if I do it? He says, this is not the church. I said, where two or three come together in his name, there am I in the midst. Therefore, you cannot. <laughs> I don't care how big the title is, you still cannot do it. Cigarette will kill you, just like cocaine will kill you. You can say amen to that. <laughs> From the beginning of time, the blood of Jesus caught the attention. But folk, tonight I want to say it is not just the blood of Jesus. But from the beginning of time when there was sin in the Garden of Eden, and Adam and Eve sinned, an animal had to die to protect their nakedness. They discovered that they were naked and there was a skin that was required. An animal had to die. Blood was shed because of sin. And sin has a wage. Sin takes with it a toll. You cannot continue sinning and live in sin and think when you die that's where it ends. It does not work that way. Sin has a day of reckoning. Sin brings a payday along with it. Sin is no game. Sin may seem fun for the time, but sin in the end has a wage that no one would like to receive. An animal gives up its life because of Adam and Eve. And because of Adam and Eve's lifestyle, this continues down into the next generation. Two men called Cain and Abel, their sons. I want to say, mother and father, you better and live today like it is the only day that you have to live for Jesus. You and I had better and live like we are believers and like we love Jesus because these young boys and young girls will emulate our lifestyles. They will do whatever I do. When my young boy comes home, he would, he would preach and say the words that I had spoken in the meetings because they watch us. Your children watch you. If you hide behind the scenes and do things in the closet, your kids will find it out and they will be the type of Christian that you are. And we don't need mediocrity in the society that we are living in. We need men and women that are fervent, that are in season, unashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation Amen. to everyone that believeth. It is God's power. Genesis, the fourth chapter. Cain and Abel go out to sacrifice. Cain goes out, the Lord says to Cain, where is Abel in verse 9? Where is Abel thy brother? A murderer is not just a murderer. A murderer is a liar as well. And whatever comes along with it. You do not do one thing that is wrong only. When you begin to do that thing, Satan has devised other things that go along. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. A jigsaw puzzle is not complete with one of the little, uh, what they call them, dookies at home. 
one of the little portions of the puzzle. It's not complete. That is incomplete. That is how sin is. Sin does not stay in one portion. Sin expands. Sin builds itself up until sin becomes so big that it manifests in the form of murder, of hatred, of venom, of violence, of streets, of races against races, of men. There's a man in, in Chicago by the name of Louis Farrakhan. He promotes racism. He has nothing but venom and hatred in him. And when I drive up to the stoplight, folks, and his men sell these pamphlets called Louis Farrakhan, the Savior, I stop at the light regardless of the color of that light, and I tell him, Jesus Christ is the Savior. He died for Louis Farrakhan so that Louis Farrakhan may know what it means to have eternal life. There is no salvation in any other name. Amen. Amen. And I've got good news tonight. The, the only name that God honors is the name of Jesus Amen. for heaven. Amen. God will not honor the name of Mohammed. Mohammed's bones stink. God will not honor the name of Buddha. God will not honor the name of Confucius. God will not honor the name of Hare Krishna. God will not honor the name of Mr. Moon. God honors the name of his son. Amen. And this part is even better. God will not honor the name of the first Christian church. God will not honor the name of the church of God, or the assembly of God, or Baptist, or Lutheran, or Methodist, or Catholic. God will honor the name of his son. For God sent his son into the world so that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the reason I sing and I shout for Jesus came down and lifted me out. Amen. Hallelujah. And he said, where is Abel? He said, I do not know. You liar. You just killed him. Where is Abel? You tell God I do not know. Folks, Let's bring it down to this realm. Many a time you and I are confronted with situations and before the God of heaven we would lie and think nothing about it. It's time that we lived, as our sister shared, that we lived in a manner that is pleasing unto God every moment of the day. Amen. Within our power. Where is Abel? I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood crieth from the ground. Life in the blood they shared this morning. I'm glad they went through the Greek. They did all the ground laying. They did the foundation. So I'm not going to any of the Greek texts. I'm just going to run. You'll run along with me. 56 miles, we'll keep moving. <laughs> Cain says, I do not know. Abel, I do not Never heard of him, probably. <laughs> Cain was simply continuing this thing called sin that his parents had begun in the Garden of Eden. You see, when my boy goes out, he will continue what he was taught in our home. In our home, there is something called family altar. I learned that from my mommy and my daddy. And we do it in our home, not simply because mommy and daddy, but we want to say thank you to God for a marvelous day. At the end of the school here, we want to assess ourselves, get together with our, with our family, and we want to say the year has ended. The summer has ended. Where are you and I in the body of Christ? How have we lived this year? From the youngest to the oldest, who is my wife. <laughs> Cain thought by killing Abel he was solving the problem Cain thought he was getting rid of the challenging lifestyle they do not like to see you and I live for Jesus but folk the sad thing is that many a time the body of Christ will give in to intimidation you and I cannot be intimidated by the works of darkness you and I cannot be intimidated by the order of Satan. You and I cannot be intimidated, not even by Satan himself, because we know in whom we have believed. And we are persuaded that he's able to guard or keep those things that we've committed unto him, even against that day. Amen. Amen. For me to live is, is Christ and to die is gain. I was thinking today, 
death is joy. Amen. So if you fear death, then you have a problem. Amen. There is no stinging death. When it's time to go, we must say, Hallelujah, Lord, come. Amen. Quick, Lord, take me. That is what we as believers are living. I know we have work to do, but folk, if you tell me you are not looking forward to a reward, then you are not for real. Amen. We are looking forward to the city. And my brother said that one day his name is Abraham. He said, I'm looking for a city which has foundations, whose maker and builder is God. And I'm looking forward to that city. I have not seen, ear hath not heard, neither has it entered into my heart the things that God has prepared for you and I, his people. Amen. God has prepared a city for us. Cain says, I do not know. Cain spilt his brother's blood. And let me say this here and now. Cain spilt Abel's blood. But the blood of Jesus was not spilt. Amen. The blood of Jesus was shed, Amen. was given freely Amen. for the remission Amen. of our sins. Amen. And so Cain watches as the earth licks up and swallows up the blood of his brother. It is over. There is no record. There is nobody around even. No police force. No FBI. Like today, there's no police force around. They sell their drugs. The uniform comes, but there's no integrity inside the uniform. Because the uniform buys the dope and keeps the dope dealers in business. There's no police force around. There's no law. There's no judges. There are no gallows. Just like today. We do away with the death penalty because we are civilized. It is uncivilization. Amen. The greatest moment of capital punishment will be the white throne judgment. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. There was no, around, no one around that could punish him. No one to say, Cain, this and that and that. And so Cain thinks, I am safe. The problem's gone. I can live the way I want to. But the voice of Abel's blood went through to the heavens. The voice of Abel's blood went beyond the skies. It reached the ear of the invisible God, and it moved the heart of the eternal justice. Amen. Amen. Today is a time wherein there is no more justice. The O.J. Simpsons and the money spinners of this day may get their reprieve and get off and be found innocent. And I'm not making a statement about that case. I'm saying that today you can get away with murder, but there is a day of reckoning that lies ahead. Amen. There is a day of justice. Amen. The blood was so effective that it broke through the veil that concealed the infinite from man and caused God to speak to Cain and say, Cain, I know what you have done. I know this thing that you have done, and it displeases me, Cain. What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. Man may cover it up, but God exposes. God will reveal it. Amen. And folk, the good news is that the reason for God exposing it is so that we may be drawn unto him. Mm -hmm. God does not expose it to put us down. God exposes me, my sin so that I may come to him. Yes. Come unto me, all he that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Man may cover it up. God opens it up. The murder of Abel was mild because there was one that took place by the religious leaders, by the religious folk of the age, and that was upon Calvary's hill. This was not the blood of the first man. This was not the blood of an ordinary man. This was the blood of the Son of God. He was man, but he was more than a man. Amen. He was God Amen. manifested in the flesh. Amen. Hebrews 12, 24 says, And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh of better things than the blood of Abel, the blood of Jesus Christ speaketh. 
the voice of the blood of Jesus Christ speaks. And there is a message that Jesus' blood, God's blood speaks, speaking in our behalf. The religious folk, as they stood by and watched him upon the cross, they accused him, they condemned him, and they shouted, away with him. Away with him. We do not want him. They watched as a cat of nine tails lashed his back and stripped his back into pieces of ground beef, put a crown of thorns upon his head, and plucked at his beard, and buffeted him and beat him, spat in his face, and then put a large cross on his back and watched him stagger up to the hill called Golgotha's Hill. Take him away. He's a burden. He's a hindrance to our modern day society. The cry still goes out today, away with these Christians. Away with these holy rollers. Away with these Jesus lovers. Away with these Jesus talkers. They tell me that at work, folks, the more they tell you, the more we speak it, the more we live it. Just like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water, Amen. we shall not be moved. It is impossible. Impossible. They accused him. And they said, take him away. And with the aid of nails, they hang him between heaven and earth. Suspended between heaven and earth, pierce his side. And cause him to bleed. And they watch him die. And they speak to them among themselves and they say, we have silenced this accusing voice. There will no more be heard in our streets the cry of him who said, and I like this, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. He was not one who covered it up. He did not soothe it and give a sugar-coated pill. He gave them the real deal. He said, you hypocrites, and we today are scared to use Bible terminology, so we go down to the terminology of the so-called witch doctor of the age called the psychologist. Amen. The world is changing and falling apart, and we tell them there is comfort on the couch of some psychologist. All you have to do is sign on the bottom line and never eat again because it costs all your money. But Jesus came and shed his blood. Folk, I want to say this pertinently tonight, that a believer does not need a counselor. Because Isaiah the prophet found it fit to say, thou shalt call his name wonderful, counselor, Amen. the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace, the rose of Sharon, and the lily of the valley, and the bright and morning star. He said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Though he were dead, yet shall he live. Amen. He knows how to de deal with this body and this mind. He knows how to put me together. Amen. Folk, he took me out of alcohol. The next day, I did not desire alcohol 20 years ago. I did not go for needles. And to be tied down, tied down like some dog. We are not dogs. We are created in the image of God. Amen. And therefore I am not beating on the AA. But I'm saying there's something better than Alcoholics Anonymous. And that is the blood of Jesus. Amen. These witch doctors and quacks are tearing our people apart. And the group that I used to work with, they would send the body, the church, would send people down to the counselors, and the counselor would tell them, counselors would tell them, don't attend services on these days. Don't go. Folk, God has given us an instruction not to neglect. Anyone who tells you to neglect is opposing God. Amen. And I want to hear what God says. God Amen. says, come, I want to come. Amen. They said, we will no longer hear that we are hypocrites. Because, folk, the truth of the matter is, while I was a drunk, I didn't want people to tell me I was a drunk. I was too proud. <laughs> I had education. How can I be a drunk? Those are the best drunks and the biggest drunks because they are sophisticated and proud about their drunk. Wow, 11 o'clock. <laughs> they said, no more will our rituals be disturbed. 
No more when we do things our way will someone come by and preach against it and teach against it. No more will someone come by and heal on the Sabbath day. We've done away with this man. He's the hypocrite. We are the ones who are right. We know the law. We know how to give people peace. But they gave the people pieces. Amen. No Amen. peace. Right. Little did they realize that in Jerusalem there was a cry going up, his blood be upon us yeah. and upon our children. And let me say, folk, his blood is power. His blood is no game. His blood is no word that we play around with. His blood is precious. Amen. Amen. His blood is holy. His blood has Amen. the working of the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, within it. And so when his blood cries out and his blood hears and the, the, the host of heaven hear his blood on us and upon our children, we do not want him around. Take him away. There is judgment that will be visited upon that nation. Yes, amen. While they said his blood be upon us, there was in Jerusalem a treasure house of woe and a den of misery before long. I want to say this tonight. That unless this nation, the greatest nation on the planet, gets back to becoming the greatest nation, which is by bowing its knee to God, Amen. there will be judgment visited Amen. upon America. Amen. Amen. America needs to repent. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal the land. Oh, how's God, how they cry about the welfare system. They cry about Medicare. They cry about the falling dollar. They cry about this, that, and the other. And they look toward the White House. Hope is not in the White House. It is in Jesus. It is in the church getting back and bowing its knee and saying, God, I have failed. We have failed and we repent before you. Amen. Judgment visited Jerusalem. His blood be on us. But while this cry went up, his blood be on us, there was another cry that went up, a melodious cry that said, Father, forgive them. Yes. While they said, away with him, his blood said, Father, forgive them, so that you and I may be in this place tonight, Amen. so that you and I may be free, whom the sun sets free, is free indeed. Amen. Amen. When I listen to the words of our switch, and I hear the name of Hiroshima, Nagasaki, Pearl Harbor, it makes me think. But when I hear the name Calvary, it makes me look up Amen. for my redemption. Amen. Draw it nigh. Amen. The voice of the blood of Jesus is not quiet. The voice of the blood of Jesus was not quiet. Don't look at the number of pages. The voice of his blood cried for us and not against us. Amen. Amen. While the blood of Abel was one of vengeance, the blood of Jesus Christ went up and said, Forgive them. I died for them. I paid the price for them. It spake not of worse things, but it spake of better things than the blood of Abel. Amen. It did not demand vengeance. Like Abel's blood, it did not call for us to be banished from God to hell, but rather it cried, forgive them, Father. And the cry prevailed. Amen. And the curse was Amen. taken away. Right. And the blessing came. Hence, you and I have become heirs of the Father, Amen. joint heirs with the Son. Hence, you and I, who once were afar off, have now been brought near. And we, who once were no people, have become a people. We are now a part of the household Amen. of faith. Amen. Amen. We were once his enemies, but now we are called his sons, Amen. his Amen. children. We are his brothers. John so aptly writes, he says, to him be glory. And I'm going to close, if you give me an hour. To him that loved us washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests 
unto God his Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Revelation 1.5. Amen. John was in prison. Folk, it does not matter where you are. I can say this now. I walk over time where I never knew when, what do they call them, security forces, at home they call them SS, would knock on my door and say, pack up, time to move. I did not know. But every night when I got down to put my head down, I'd say, Lord, I am yours. Therefore, I am not going to worry this night. I'll put my head down and I'm going to rest because you give me rest. Amen. And God knows how to take care of his people. Amen. John was in prison and the doors were shut to him but the doors of heaven opened. Amen. Amen. And well, whilst he was in prison he beheld something that those on the outside did not see. Amen. While you and I may be termed as strange people or heretics or whatever name they may call us we still have access to the throne room of God. Amen. We are still able to get into contact with God and see things that the naked eye cannot see. Amen. Amen. Did Amen. you know today that you can see things and hear things that even President Clinton does not hear? <laughs> I believe the president would have loved to be in meetings like these to hear the truth of God. I hope he would to hear the truth of God expounded. In prison, but has a wonderful sight. While he's in prison, the greatest sight that he has is the host of heaven falling down in adoration before the Lamb, yeah. standing in the midst of the throne, mm -hmm. yeah. bowing down. For when we come to not just to worship God, when we rise in the morning, we don't live flippant lives. When we come into the services, and these are things that probably because of the type of background culture that I come from. When I come into the presence of God, into the, into the worship service, it is not a loose moment. Amen. It is not Amen. something for me to talk about the grocery store and the prices of eggs. It is time to reflect upon the presence of God. Amen. It is not time for shifting around and moving around and fooling around. It is time for discipline and time to recognize that God is in our midst and we will reverence the presence of our holy God. Amen. Amen. John saw them as they bowed and worshipped him. But John also heard that there was the frequent mention of the blood of the Lamb. Yes. Two things, recognizing them bowing before God and hearing the acknowledgement of the blood of Jesus. The mention of the name of Jesus sometimes does not stir many believers. Sometimes they can hear the name Jesus, the blood of the Lamb, the sinless one who died for my sake. And it's something like Michael Jordan scored a goal, whatever they call it. Because we have been, become so accustomed to church. We have become so religious. We have a certain form and we know everything. Therefore, when we hear these terms, it does not stir us any longer. Because we know everything. Folk, when you get to the place where you know everything, you've just got to the place where you know nothing. Amen. Amen. No person ever knows everything. His blood and being washed in it is the central point of John's praise. Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't bring your dogma from your church to help the blood of Jesus. Don't bring your philosophy to help the blood of Jesus. Don't bring your ideologies to help the blood of Jesus. Don't bring your education and say, I think it can be done this way. Don't tell people, in other words, that you have been to Olivet Nazarene University. Tell them you have seen the Nazarene. Amen. People don't want to know all the frills and all these other things. They, want, they need to hear the central point, and that is the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Shed Amen. for the remission of our sins. 
when we get to the place where we recognize the supremacy, superiority, the power, and the efficacy, and the complete healing that God planned by the shedding of his son's blood, then we too would be able to cry out and say to him, be glory and power forever and ever. He lives and reigns forever and ever. Because he washed me in his blood. A direct reference to the fact that I've been delivered. We sing the song, Would You Be Free? from your burden of sin. I was in an assembly one day and they sang the song. And someone was chewing gum. I hate chewing gum in an assembly. I hate chewing gum when it comes to the ministering of God's word. It is a distraction. And they said, and they said, would you be free? And they chew the gum. And the people don't even realize what they are saying. Folks, this is not some, something that I'm just concocting. It is, it is most distracting. When someone is, is ministering, that someone is doing these little things that have no part of the assembly, no part of the meeting place. Distractions, not just to the preacher, but to themselves. And so they sing power in the blood of Jesus, but they don't realize that because they sit with their burdens, they are still weighed down by their problems. If they knew what they were singing, would you be free from your burden of sin? There is power in the blood is the answer. Do you want to come to Calvary for a cleansing? There's power in the blood. Then come to Calvary and get the cleansing because his blood is still effective today. Amen. Amen. He has delivered us from the penalty, from the power. One day from the presence of sin. Yes. Yes. The blood of Jesus Christ, folk, and I want to emphasize this, does not need your help. Amen. Amen. That's right. There are many people that are bound by habits because they want to improvise on the salvific process of Jesus Christ. They want to say, this is how God can do it. Well, sir, then you may as well just do it on your own. Amen. Amen. His blood knows how to do it. Never mind. <laughs> he does not need the Methodist church doctrine to aid him. He can do it on his own. He does not require anything from a man other than his surrender for him to cleanse us from his sin. Amen. It is powerful enough to work through the medium of the Spirit. Amen. Sin has polluted us. and Sin got deep down into our hearts. It is not the washing of my head, of my mind. It is the cleansing of the heart. The heart that is deceitful and desperately wicked. This is where it begins. Yes, amen. When I take a detergent and put it into, not me, my wife, and she puts it into the washing, uh, whatever, this machine, that detergent has to go in as far as the stain is. As far as the sin has reached, that is how far the blood has to reach the heart. Amen. amen. Until it gets to the heart, you and I will never be free. We will still be bound. We will still be weighed on. We will still be held on. We will still have a thing that is coming into the church now called depression. There is no such thing to the child of God. We are overcomers through Christ who first loved us. Amen. Therefore, we do not walk way down. We walk with our heads up high. And when a trial comes your way, lift your head up. I and say, hallelujah, anyhow. Amen. When the devil comes your way, there's a song they sing in Africa that says, I'm going to sing, sing, sing. I'm going to shout, shout, shout. I don't care what the people say. I'm going to praise him anyway. There's another part that says, I don't care what Hare Krishna says. I don't care what old Buddha says. Then the other part says, I don't care what the Methodists say, and I don't care what the Baptists say. I'm going to praise him anyway. He's my deliverer. He's my savior. He's my Lord and he's my God. I have reason to praise him. Amen. Amen. I've got 10 pages, Brother Dallas. <laughs> but I left them in the car. <laughs> I love Brother Dallas. 
When I came in, I called him Brother Texas, and I realized afterwards it was Brother Dallas. <laughs> John speaks of a twofold work of grace. 1 John 1 9, he says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yes, yes. Amen. If you're in this meeting tonight and you've slidden back, you've drawn back, turned your back on the Lord, it is time to slide back to Jesus. Yes. It is time to get right with God. It is not, to, not a time to live in an hour of deception. It's not a time to live in a moment of indecision. It is a time to know that I know that if Christ were to come tonight, I am ready to meet him. Amen. Folk, when I think of the young man who's gone on to be with the Lord Joshua, 14 years old, and my friend they called this week to say 42 years young, sat down in the chair, pain in the arm, and went on to be with the Lord, you and I may not see the motor car tonight. Someone says, don't be negative. No, sir, that is being positive. Amen. That is being real. That is reality. We may not see the next minute. Boast not of tomorrow, for you know not what a day may hold. I do not know about tomorrow, and I do not know the day of tomorrow, but I thank God that I know the one who holds tomorrow. Amen. If we walk in the light, the seventh verse says, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. You know why I love Brother Given? It's because he walks in the light. Amen. Why I love Brother Gene or Brother Dallas or Brother Vernon or my mother here, it's because they walk in the light. Amen. It is not because of something that was done many years back and that they, they thought they had, but it is something that they live daily. Believing is something we do every day. Amen. We don't have belief, we believe every day. We have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin and inward work. Let me close. His blood was poured out to precede the outpouring of his spirit on the day of Pentecost. But before there could be a Pentecost, there had to be a Golgotha. Amen. Before there was an outpouring of the Spirit, there had to be the outpouring of His blood. Amen. Amen. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered Himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Amen. We are serving a God who by His Spirit is present in this meeting tonight. Amen. And knows and hears everything and bears record to everything that we say. Amen. Right. To every response. Folk, you may think that this brother is preaching. Therefore, it is all. It is the, the weight, the encumbrance. Not encumbrance, but uh, the, the weight of the matter is upon every one of us as we gather you to the, here tonight. Your response to the words that have been speaking, spoken throughout these meetings will determine your destiny one day. Amen. Amen. What have you done with the blood of my son? The shedding of his blood was brought about by the eternal spirit and that spirit lived and worked in the blood. This blood could not decay. Amen. But was taken as a living reality up to heaven where it exercises its divine power. Amen. That is why when you and I move around and we walk around, we are not foolish, but folk, we don't walk around trembling like some gay community, sorry, <laughs> gay community. We move around like people who are certain and know that we have an assurance in Jesus Christ. Amen. The word, of, word eternal is a word that is understood by everyone but a word that is often misinterpreted by most. Everyone thinks that the word eternal life means never-ending life. That is a negative interpretation of the word. And it tells us exactly what the word is not. Eternal is something that has no end 
but also no beginning. <laughs> everything that was created, everything that exists in time and space has a beginning and is subject to the law of increase and decrease and of becoming or decaying. What is eternal has no beginning and knows no change. And here's the good part, knows no weakening. The blood of Jesus Christ is as effective as it was on the day when it hit terra firma, caused the earth to convulse under the power and the heavens to shake because there is power in the blood Amen. of Amen. Jesus. The eternal life, eternal joy, eternal redemption are terms that are more than just no end. It means a quality that God gives me. Yeah. Yeah. When I tell someone you have eternal life, I'm not telling them, go out, you don't have to worry about doing anything. You are going to heaven. I'm telling them what God gives you is the quality of life to live above these circumstances because you have the eternal one who has no beginning, who from the beginning was there. He said yeah. before they were, I was, I am, said Jesus. I am that I am Amen. knows no weakening point. It means something in which the power of, end, of the endless is at work. God working in me. God working in you. God bring, bringing about good works in our lives, through our lives. Amen. We therefore can demonstrate this power and that it is superior Amidst all fluctuations, all mindsets of this world, we can be consistent yes. Amen. and live like people that are heaven bound. His blood has cleansed you and I and made us priests. And in closing, he's made us kings yes. because he gives us the authority over the works of darkness. Amen. Amen. He gives us authority and rule. He makes us priests because of the purity and the nearness to God. Mm -hmm. And tonight the challenge that I leave with you is that as we leave from Joplin, Missouri, let the message ring that the blood of Jesus Christ is still effective Amen. and still able to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yes. God bless you. Amen. 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 Brother Roderick, you shared with me something at home that I'd like to share with the congregation, with everybody here, concerning the young man that had their case last year. Mm -hmm. I, I wish you would do that. Oh, the attorney. Yes. We, when you left last year, we all thought you would have to go back to South Africa. Africa. Yes. Uh, and Sister Becky has met the gentleman. The, when we got home, the attorney that had our case, uh, I had visited him, but we did not know each other very well. And he got to study my case and know what it was all about, and he discovered where the problem was. And he has since become a part of our assembly, and uh, he has done everything without any payment, taken any payment. He has taken control of even the paperwork that is done now. He intends to submit in the second week of August and his name is Bruce Carr just a man who loves the Lord when we get out to preach on the streets he's there with us unashamed of the gospel and I want to thank the Lord for your prayers it is prayer that still reaches God that changes the heart he, even the heart of the king is in the hands of God yes, even amen. even immigration has to bow when God says <laughs> no Thank you, brother. Amen. Thank you, brother. Let's stand as we sing number 251.